Happy Halloween, Disney fans. It's Disney Dan here with a truly spooky episode of Distory, a Disney history lesson. Hold on to your children, magic pumpkins, and bewitched poisoned apples, because for episode 14 of Distory, we're going to bring you a really creepy look back at some really, really weird vintage costumes. We've brought you the creepy costumes from Disneyland parks and shows, but what we haven't focused on yet is the terrifying homemade costumes and outfits that came before the ice capades, theme parks, or red carpet events. You might think that that cut open foam face of Mickey Mouse from Disneyland in 1955 is the creepiest Mickey costume you've ever seen. Guess what? You're wrong. In the time between Mickey Mouse first entering the hearts of the world in 1928 and the late 1930s when commercially produced costumes became available, there was a small period when crafty fans and adventurous costume shops made their own versions of a walk around Mickey Mouse costume. So hold on to your spooky hats and let's look back at the creepy evolution of vintage Mickey Mouse homemade costumes. The earliest photos of homemade Mickey Mouse costumes look to mostly be by local family-owned costume shops, which took popular characters at the time and did their best to make a familiar version to entertain kids. You can still see costume shops do this today with knockoff Mickey Mouse characters in places like Times Square, New York, or Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles. These costumes are super freaky, but you can tell that they maybe had their best intentions. I, I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure, some of these are really weird looking. The faces were made of either carefully patterned fabric with hard boning or foam inside to give it some support, or, or crafty paper mache creations with carefully sculpted, finished, big round signature heads and round ears. These are just really, really strange. Some costumes were actually official in the sense that Disney had hired companies to make a character mask or outfit to promote something for an appearance, uh, but this was long before Disney had their own theme parks and people who worked in the theme parks who made costumes and designed them and kind of had official stuff going, so these unique builds were just that unique. There was no rule book. These homemade, this homemade creativity is what led us to some of these really weird choices and ultimately even weirder results. Some of these Mickey Mouse costumes look like they might sneak into your home at night and try to eat you. One of those officially commissioned masks was around this time of the homemade Disney Mickey Mouse kind of costume shop weirdness, and it was designed by Kay Kamen and stands above the rest. Built by the Old King Cole Display Company, the legendary merchandising partner to Disney, Kay Kamen, was the man that was kind of the driving force behind all kinds of Mickey merchandise, including the iconic Mickey Mouse watch. This costume now sits happily in a private collection on top of a Charlie Chaplin statue, of course, still with the signature velvet clothing that he was originally released with folded neatly inside. The clean lines and more polished look of this Mickey costume is what ushered in some of the better looking vintage Mickey Mouse outfits moving forward. In fact, as Mickey Mouse began to grow rapidly in popularity, he was included in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in the early 1930s with a massive balloon. Just like you see today with all the people handling the balloons, the group of parade performers all wore signature matching Mickey Mouse heads. The small batch of Mickey Mouse heads may be one of the first large batches of unofficial park heads to be made. The paper mache heads had a large red tongue and uh, the signature view holes inside of the large black eye. Believe it or not, some of these heads survived today despite being close to 90 years old and are on display in some private collections, which I think is pretty awesome. Mickey would continue to be used in the parade for several years in the 1930s, and each year the balloon handlers would return and those escorts would be wearing those cool giant paper mache Mickey heads, which didn't look all that bad. Around the same time of the Mickey Mouse parading around Thanksgiving, the Mickey Mouse club sensation was spreading across the nation. Hordes of people would gather, families, friends, kids, adults, into large theaters so they could watch the Mickey Mouse cartoons and celebrate their fandom. This iconic photo of the group shows them all wearing an early mass-produced Mickey Mouse mask. 
these paper masks came in a few different characters like Mickey, Minnie, and even Clarabelle, the two lead mice being the most popular and in-demand mask, right? You don't see any Clarabelles in that crowd now, do you? There is really something truly unsettling to this picture with the hundreds of Disney cartoon fans all staring blankly at you with these thin paper masks on. It's just, it's just so many Mickey heads. It's just, ooh, it gives me the shivers to look at it for a long time. Eventually, the Disney company officially licensed the Mickey Mouse characters to have their own official Halloween costumes mass produced commercially. You'd hope that this would mean that some nice, friendly, happy masks of your iconic childhood characters would be brought to the public, but sadly, that's not the case. These early Halloween costumes made by the Warnova company are just as equally creepy as some of the early homemade stuff we just saw. They came in both adult sizes and kid sizes and featured a mask, pants, gloves, and a Mickey Mouse patch that you would wear on your black t-shirt. Uh, in fact, the company made several versions of this costume for Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Clarabelle, Horace, and even the Big Bad Wolf, all with their own unique kind of outfits that went with the masks, including a round patch that featured whatever character you were supposed to be. Because in case the mask wasn't clear enough, you could say, oh, look, there's that uh, patch with Minnie on it. I guess you're supposed to be Minnie because you're terrifying my dreams right now. Pictures of both kids and adults wearing these costumes are so weird and creepy. I, I just, I don't know if it's how they're unexpressive and, and, and simple that the masks make it are, are so weird to look at, or maybe it's the, the cold black eye and the stark white contrast of the white face. I don't know. There's just something about these vintage photos of, of, of children and even some adults wearing these masks and they're just kind of staring at you blankly through space and time in these black and white photos that just is really unsettling. You know me, I tried desperately to find some videos of kids wearing these costumes and I just, I couldn't find anything. So we'll just have to stick to these loads of vintage photos and uh, you can use your imagination or maybe don't imagine these. Maybe it's best to just look at the photos and then forget you ever saw them. Don't let them, don't let it creep into your, into your psyche, into your dreams. Slowly, more colorful, creative Halloween costumes began to emerge with, with full outfits made of cheap plastic and, and thin plastic masks painted up with rosy cheeks and bright eyes. The evolution, really, of the creepy vintage ones from the 30s all the way through to the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it's, re it's really fascinating to go. I mean, just hop on eBay for a half an hour and just search vintage Mickey Mouse costumes and just look at all of the really, really cool costumes and like how they've changed over the years. It's, it's absolutely fascinating to me. As the years rolled by, Mickey's Halloween costume got less and less creepy, thank goodness. It's kind of funny how for many years what kids considered to be a Halloween costume was just a flimsy mask and a wearable garbage bag, more or less, with the character they love printed on it. Today, of course, we rely less and less on big masks and silly themed shirts for our mass produced kids' costumes. Instead, kids get to wear Mickey Mouse by literally being in his costume with the signature red pants and the big round ears and the, and the tucks and tails. No more weird Mickey printed on a garbage bag that you kind of wear around for Halloween and it barely lasts the night. Thank goodness we've gotten away from that. With Disney's crazy growth in theme parks and merchandising, in fact, it's been even easier than ever to throw together your own Mickey Mouse costume using the ears you snagged at the park during your last visit and uh, some black shirts and pants and or like a red skirt where you throw a couple white polka dots on. It's super easy to dress as Mickey and Minnie Mouse now, but before you kind of had to rely on these mass produced things because uh, merchandising was not like it was today. But let's not forget the creepy history of modern Disney characters' costumes, both homemade and commercial, and be thankful that running into a Mickey during Halloween this year won't be as terrifying as it might have been running into Mickey back in 1936. There's our spooky look back at the Mickey Mouse costumed homemade evolution. I'm interested to know how many of my viewers and subscribers who might be a little bit older actually owned and wore some of these older vintage plastic bag, thin flimsy plastic mask kind of costumes that they were so incredibly popular in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I can't imagine them lasting more than like 
I don't know, maybe one night of trick-or-treating. I, I really, I mean, you just fall down once in a pile of leaves and the thing is shredded to pieces. I, they really look so incredibly flimsy and cheap. But um, thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. It was hard to kind of like put a timeline on some of these video, on some of these photos that we found of vintage Mickey Mouse. So if you uh, have any more information about any of these photos or if you want to share some creepy Mickey Mouse photos, hit us up on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find all the links in the description below. And please, if you haven't already, already subscribe to our channel leave a comment throw us a like do all the things that you normally do if you like this content and check out some of our other fun history videos including the very creepy evolution of the real mickey mouse from the theme parks and also some of our cool history mini episodes where we check out fun park secrets facts tidbits all that kind of fun stuff so thanks so much for watching as always big thanks to all the cool people who helped me put these videos together your research and your help is just endlessly uh, appreciated really really love it and thank Thanks so much to all the viewers. You're also great too. Thanks for watching, guys. You rock.